What are we learning about these Russian bomber jets that approached Alaska? Well, as you mentioned, Sandra, for the second consecutive night, Russia flew two long-range nuclear-capable bear bombers off the coast of Alaska, this time coming within 36 miles of mainland Alaska, flying north of the Aleutian Islands. The two Tupolev 95H bombers were spotted by U.S. military radar at 9 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. local time. Unlike a similar incident Monday night, this time the U.S. Air Force did not scramble any fighter jets. Instead, it launched a single E-3 Sentry early warning aircraft known as AWACS to make sure there were only the two Russian bombers flying near Alaska and not flying underneath the large bombers. U.S. territorial waters extend 12 nautical miles from shore. A day earlier, these Russian jets approached Alaska's Kodiak Island, Sandra. And Jennifer, where's the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier strike group at this moment? Well, that's like asking, where's Waldo? The Vinson finally left Australia and is heading north. We can confirm that. The commander of the USS Carl Vinson strike group says the aircraft carrier is now being extended 30 days to deal with the rising North Korean threat. The location of the Vinson has become a PR disaster for the Pentagon and White House. Earlier this month, the head of the U.S. Pacific Command said the aircraft carrier and its strike group would be heading north from Singapore to take station off the Korean Peninsula in the wake of growing tensions. But instead, the Vinson proceeded south to the Indian Ocean to train with Australian counterparts. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis tried to explain today why the Pentagon misled the public. The Vinson, as I said on the record, was, was operating up and down the Western Pacific. And we were doing exactly what we said, and that is we are shifting her instead of continuing in one direction. Uh, as she pulled out of Singapore, she's going to continue part of her cruise down in that region, but she was on her way up to Korea. I believe it's because she was originally headed in one direction uh, for an exercise, and we canceled our role in that exercise, and that's what became public. So we had to explain why she wasn't in that exercise. Mattis added to the confusion at that Pentagon press conference on April 11th, um, and it was those words that then got misunderstood by the White House, and uh, it was really too late to, to clarify at that point. In reality, she took part in the Australian exercise before heading north. The Vinson will arrive off the Korean Peninsula earlier next week. Okay. And Jennifer, what are we hearing about the Syrians moving their jets to a Russian base? Well, what we've just learned from U.S. defense officials is that they have seen uh, signs that the Syrian Air Force has essentially taken all of those jets that were based at that Shayrat Air Force base that the U.S. had sent those 59 Tomahawks, Tomahawk missiles to strike. They have moved them all now to the Russian air base at Latakia. Um, and so they are essentially uh, compiling and keeping their, their aircraft there at the Russian base so that the U.S. can't destroy any more of them. Um, you remember that General Mattis said at the time that those 59 Tomahawks had essentially disabled 20 Syrian aircraft. So the Syrians are now um, hiding those aircraft at the Russian base, we're All told. Right. Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Thank you.